See, your microphone, by the way, is it rubbing against your zipper or anything like that this time? <laughs> Possibly. Because <laughs> all I can hear is rattle, 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 rattle. Right, how's that? That's better. Right, okay. Thank you. I'm pedantic, I know. Well, I know you are, aye. Oh, that's, so that's one way of describing you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake, I've only just started talking. Oh, sorry, I'm start, start, uh, trying to stifle a sneeze here. <laughs> and it came out as a yawn. <laughs> all right, okay. <laughs> Final third. Oh, two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. You know what that means, eh? One's a wish, two's a kiss, three's something else. A disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been a disappointment. <laughs> and the stadium erupts in red, white, and blue. You've never seen anything like it. Let's go. Hi everyone and welcome to the next episode of the I Ready Podcast. As ever, I'm your host Derek and with me is my co-host Dave. How are you doing Dave? I'm very well Derek, how are you mate? I've got the cold. Oh, diddums. Oh, sorry, I've not got the cold, I've got man flu. Oh, you've got man flu, oh that's, <laughs> that's worse. Exactly, it's you know, deathbed material. Exactly, no, <laughs> well you certainly, sound, you certainly sound clear mate, so you know, you know nasally and snotty and everything like that so that's the main thing uh, maybe no sound it but you should see me uh, I'm quite glad I'm, I'm in a completely <laughs> different town for you at the moment to be honest with you uh, black current lemsip works wonders so. oh that sounds absolutely disgusting you, well, as opposed you, to you normal know, lemsip I would rather have the normal lemsip Derek I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm a citrus man I'm not a I'm not a, a berry type person, you know, I'm, oh, I'm not really a, a fruity person, do you know what I mean? That's not what I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. On to more serious matters, yes. Exactly. Uh, two games to cover this episode, the uh, Rapid Vienna game and the Hamilton game as well, so uh, we've not got a lot of news to cover either tonight, so it should be a fairly quick podcast, but no okay. doubt we'll get into some rants and exactly. that'll still That's last the usual do. three hours, so. Ah, exactly. Yes. So we'll just batter on and we'll go down the tunnel and onto the pitch. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, so as I said, uh, the first game we've got to cover was Thursday the 13th of December. It was the 1-0 loss away to Rapid Vienna in the Europa League Group G Game 6. And unfortunately, it meant that we were out of Europe after this game. But as I said in the post-match pod, certainly proud of the players. Um, we've got nothing to uh, nothing to be embarrassed about. We've done ourselves proud, I think, in the whole European campaign, didn't we? Yeah. Oh, we definitely did, Derek. We've just got to look kind of... I think the two games against uh, Moscow were our, uh, you know, the, the undoing of us. We really should have beat them at Ibrox. And, you know, as we've been over it many, many times, you know, dodgy decisions by referees and do dodgy defending as well. And we should never have been beaten over there in Moscow. So that was definitely the two games that, you know, that, that sunk us. But... As you say, Derek, this was a complete bonus for us. It's brought in a hell of a lot of money for us, uh, which, you know, obviously we don't know the ins and outs of just now, but we'll certainly find out, you know, next next year uh, exactly what it's done. So I'm sure it's, it's done wonders there for us. It's got us back in the European map. It's got us back... Uh, you know, for the players, great experience for the players, and you know, and just even the two games against uh, Villarreal, Derek, fantastic results in both matches against a team in La Liga. Uh, you know, and at the start of all this, we just said that it's just great that the players are there. Uh, a wee bit, as I say, disappointed that we've no made it. We just missed out, but uh, you know, that's that's the way it goes. But uh, here's hoping it, you know, stands us instead for the rest of the season, and it really does, you know, help the players out because we have played a hell of a lot of games so far, Derek, haven't we? Well, absolutely, and you've got to remember we're we're still only a five-month-old team, so that's yep. the, the the thing as well. Um, I mean, each to their own in, in terms of their uh, opinions of the European campaign, but I just honestly can't believe that there was some people going mad 
at the result and claiming it was an embarrassment and saying that why are you being proud about you know what we've done. Just I don't know what the expectations of some Rangers fans are. They're, they're f- out the window, I think, sometimes. And they, they don't think with their, their head sometimes. You know, you're talking about we were fourth seeds in that group. We're a five month old team. It's the you know the manager's first you know well, it's the manager's first job as a, as a manager, and you know the the, the teams were multi millions compared with our team. They were well established. All of them, regardless of how poor they're doing in the domestically in the leagues just now, they were all established teams, uh, and that's what people need to forget, uh, need to remember. And you know, we we done amazingly in Europe this year, so. Oh, D- D- Derek, I've been watching R- Rangers a wee bit longer than you have and I have watched us being eliminated for Europe by some really, really poor teams o- over the years. I've seen us shoot ourselves in the foot I don't know how many times, so I'm taking it that the so-called Rangers fans, you know, as, as we keep going, so, so, social media is a great thing, but it's also a, a nightmare as well. Uh, I don't know if a lot of these fans are much younger fans that are on there that are, you know, putting the negative in there. But I've seen Rangers in this position before and shoot themselves in the foot. I certainly don't think that we shot ourselves in the foot this time, Derek. I think we did have some great performances. And again, just a, it was a bonus for me that we were there. I didn't honestly think we would get that far. But, uh, you know, it's it's one of these things. But I think we just need to take the comments with a pinch of salt, do you know? Yeah, I think, I, I said as I said on Twitter, and you've kind of intimated there as well, you just need to look back in the, the, some of the European displays in the, the 90s and yep. the 2000s. They were diabolical. And yes. I know, looking back in hindsight, we were a wee bit embarrassed about getting hammered against Juventus at the time. But then you look back in it, and that was a world-class team that they had there. But we're not talking about games like that. We're talking about, you know, the games, you know, against some of the lesser sides in Europe that we've been embarrassed. Uh, uh, exactly, over, so Derek. Yes, this Aye. is far from from that. So, anyway, into the game. Uh, quite strangely, and well, I would say strangely, but quite annoyingly, we made seven changes. This is, seems to be the norm for for Gerard making very, uh, very many changes in the game, and it was quite a obviously a very important game to to make these changes. And um, some of them I, I felt were justified, but you know we keep chopping and changing the team again, don't we? Yeah, uh, as, as you say, there's, there's there's some of them that you think of. Well, he's back, he's back. You know, main players for the team, but there's other ones that are a bit a, a, a wee bit strange. But I know that he had to kind of change the, you know, the the personnel just with players that were suspended and injured and stuff like that. But seven, as you say, is quite a lot, isn't it? Yeah, so we lined up anyway, McGregor, Tavernier, McCauley, Goldson, Barisic, Ross, McCrory, Jack, Koulibaly, Arfield, Middleton and Morellis. On the subs bench we had Robbie McCrory, Worrell, Lafferty, Katic, Grejda, Halliday and Flanagan. Now, probably the biggest surprise in that team for me was the McCrory getting a start because I think he's only started maybe one or two games this year so far and had a handful of appearances, so... I think it was maybe, you know, when he came on, was it the in the previous match, Derek, he came on and Done quite well, and I think he's maybe thought to himself, right? I think we really need someone in midfield that can sort of hold, you know, hold on to the ball, you know, and kind of break things up. And I know that's what Jack has been playing, but I think he was maybe wanting to try and push Jack that just that wee, wee bit further to try and be the sort of box to box midfielder, Derek. Uh, and I think he maybe thought that if he had McCrory in front of the defence, then Jack would be able to do that. But I certainly thought McCrory had a good game, which you're about to go on to. Yeah, he had a fantastic game. Obviously, his twin brother was on the subs bench as the, the sub keeper now. I thought maybe well what's the, the story there but it turns out Fodringham's partner is was due to give birth at any moment so he obviously never travelled uh, out to right. Austria um, obviously the travel to Austria there was over 10,000 Rangers fans made the journey yeah. which was incredible so um, I've seen a few videos a lot, of, a lot of people having a great time nonetheless anyway so it was incredible scene, scene to see our fans out there it got highlighted by quite a few news outlets as well yeah. I think the fact that we did take so many that was five times more than the allocation we got which was incredible so Yep, but absolutely brilliant. Yep. And the ninth minute, there was great interception by Middleton on the left side in our half. He made a charge and run up the park. Koulibaly passed to him wide left, managed to keep running and keep it in play, keep it in possession and plays a great ball uh, into the middle, but nobody was there, unfortunately. It was really good play for Middleton. Yep. Uh, on the 15th minute, Barisic with a free kick from 25 yards along the ground, forcing the keeper to make a save. Uh, I think it was going just wide anyway, but the keeper was uh, keeping all his, his bases yes. covered there. Uh, 
uh, it was quite inventive because it was set up to deliver the ball into the middle and ended up hitting it to the, the right of the wall so um, maybe a training ground exercise that one that that was yeah I think so and then the only thing else I've got in this half year is actually in the 21st minute where Goldson had a header off the bar uh, it was a great free kick whipped in from the right hand side uh, of the box by Tavernier Goldson got a powerful header to it and it smashed off the bar and I think it went out from there and I, I let out another scream one of these wee girly screams because I thought <laughs> it was in at that point uh, it, was a, it was a great effort but not to be No, uh, re- really unfortunate there Derek and at that point, we were completely controlling the match, weren't we? I mean, we, we weren't under any real pressure. We had the, you know, the vast majority of the ball, and we were getting forward, and we were causing problems. And at that point in the game, I thought, right, well, this is definitely coming. You know, we definitely deserve to, you, you know, to take the lead, but. As uh, the first half went on, you know, it kind of pattered out, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, as you said, we're, the first half, kind of, we were the better team, largely in control. Some absolutely lovely passages of play, uh, but we just needed that uh, cutting edge in the final third. The, the only problem, I think, we, we a couple of issues we had, I think, is Tavernier can go from absolutely brilliance to, to an absolute bomb scare within seconds. Um, some of his passing was, or some of his uh, deliveries were diabolical, but then some yeah. of them were brilliant. And I think maybe the other thing that were, was causing us to have that lack and that lack of a cutting edge in the final third was, I think Morelis was dropping far too deep. And when we were getting forward, we never had that outlet there to pass to because he was so, always so far back. But, you know, that's part of his play. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But I always think that if you're going to have a player like that, you need to have the, the, the kind of covering player to, to go into his position. Position to fill that, even if it was like an attacking midfielder yeah, to, which, to, to push which up. we've not got, unfortunately. No. no. So into the second half, you know, still all to play for. We could sneak a wee we go, and you know, it's all all on all on a uh, rapid to come out. And obviously, they only needed the draw, um, and they never they never sat back like they could have. They, they certainly played um, their game, and we got the better of them, but. In the second half, fifty first minute, good play ending in Jack firing um a fast hit long cross from the right into the middle of the box and clawed away by the keeper uh, before our player could get to it. On the fifty second minute, a minute later, Barisic loses the ball uh, on the left in our half, rapid get the ball into the middle on the edge of the box, feigns one way, then shoots the other, diving safe from McGregor, but fairly comfortable though and it wasn't one of yep. his worldies that he's used to. Uh, two minutes later in the fifty fourth minute there was a good break forward with Jack playing a brilliant ball to Morelis on the right hand side holds it up plays a cross into Arfield who hits the ball and deflected up uh, but Koulibaly was offside anyway 56 minute uh, it was good play with Morelis and Jack with a 1-2 in the box uh, the defence snuffed it out but it was a really good move though and it's, yeah. it's more the, the forward play we were looking for um, certainly it was a wee bit more open game um, as well it was an open game in the first half but it seemed to open up a wee bit more both teams were, were kind of going for it then 62nd minute, it was a shot from distance from Rapid, uh, but it was a comfortable save from McGregor and it was right at him. 63rd minute, it was good passing with Koulibaly trying to lob the keeper from about 25 yards, but it was uh, just over the bar. 65th minute, it was lovely skill from Morelos on the right side, taking on three players and getting across on the deck and it was slid out for the corner. On the 70th minute, Koulibaly came off and Grezda came on. 79th minute, Jack came off and Lafferty came on. 80th minute, Grezda got the ball down the left-hand side, the Defender uh, with a flicked header and into the arms of the keeper. 81st minute, there uh, was a ball on the left to Arfield in the middle, passes to Tavernier who was running in and had a 25 yard shot, it was a good save from the keeper another yeah. piece of good play and good effort yep. time was running out for us we were completely on the ascendancy at this point, yep. point I felt, we were all over them, the, we were pressing them the ball was largely played in the rapid half and I think that's the reason why the Rapid scored on the 83rd minute. Um, it was a ball uh, forced back into our uh, right back position. I think it was um, Tavernier who played the ball back to McGregor, uh, who really took his time. As I said in the post match reaction, as as soon as he started to take his time, I knew that wasn't going to end well. Uh, it was a really bad kick out to the halfway line. Uh, he tried to get it to one of our players on the halfway line, but it went right to the Rapid player who took the ball, three passes, triangle football into the box and he slotted it past McGregor now as I said 
not going to blame McGregor at all uh, for that one. He's, you know, due maybe a slight mistake, you know, if you could call it that. He had other options to pass it to. He didn't need to do the long kick. I can understand his reasoning. He wanted to get the ball up quicker, quick enough, but, you know, you can't really blame him for it. And ultimately, Rapid still had a lot of work to do before it got to, to our goal line yeah. anyway. Yeah, so our defence could have done a lot better, but fair play to Rapid. It was it was a well-worked goal. And as I said, I think because we were pushing so far up, it left the gaps at the back and maybe a wee bit of indecision. So, and that's how the, the match ended. Yes. Uh, I still keep thinking, Derek, I, you know, I still felt with about 20 minutes to go, that we could possibly sneak one, even when, you know, we were having, you know, all these chances and, and we weren't scoring. I just felt that we were going to sneak one. I just, I feel sometimes, Derek, that somebody's just need to take a chance. Do you know what I mean? You know, that there doesn't seem to be anybody sort of making that sort of sliding at the back post. I've said it lo- loads of times now, but when we're making chances, it all, we always just seem to, you know, fall a bit a foot short of any, you know, of the forward players, you know, it's as if, and it's not like the, the likes of Morelos and that to be like that, but I think sometimes he needs a wee bit of help, and Kyle Lafferty's completely off the boil the now, uh, I think it's just a confidence thing with him, as we'll get into in the next game as well, uh, and I just feel that maybe, again, it's, it's all hindsight, isn't it, but maybe bringing on Lafferty slightly earlier in the second half. I don't know if he was maybe just trying to keep it tight, you know, till 20 minutes to go and then, you know, fire everything forward. But I just feel that we had a good, strong grip of the game much earlier, that we might have, you know, had another striker on a bit earlier. But again, it's, it's all hindsight, Derek. It was, it was a you know, a, a mistake with McGregor, which we can't say anything about because he's been one of your, if not your best player this season. Uh, and it's just one of these things with, you know, it's just un- unfortunate the way that it happened, but it was a good goal that they scored, like you said, but missed chances, but I think the damage was maybe done in the, you, you know, the games p- prior to that against Moscow like I said, but uh, it was always going to be a tall order, but the, the players sh- should be quite pleased with the way that they played and the fact that we, I think we were the better team Derek, it's just a, a pity that we couldn't score Yeah, I mean I think that's what you've got to look at is the, 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 the Moscow game I mean that would have put us on the nine points uh, and it would have went into that game needing a draw. You've got to remember as well that the other game when we were playing um, Spartak is I think Rapid Vienna and Villarreal, there was I think Villarreal won or something or somebody won at the last minute which yes. left us going, uh, having to go there for a win rather than yeah. just having to draw as well so, as I said, going into that last game, every single team could have still went and not qualified. Every single team could have still qualified. Ended up with Villarreal and Rapid on 10 points, us on 6 and Spartak on 5. Um, and you would have thought Spartak Moscow would have been, I think they, they were third seeds, I think we were certainly fourth seeds. And you would have thought they would have been the more dangerous team, especially going away to, to Moscow. And um, that obviously never turned out to be the case. Um What's a wee bit galling is the fact that Rapid Vienna ended up on minus three goal difference as well, and we ended up know, on yeah. even. So, I know. Um, but it just shows you that the results against the fact that we did take three points off Rapid Vienna in the first game, and the fact that we did draw twice against Villarreal, very very creditable um, um, results uh, all round. So, um, as I said, nothing but pride for the team. So uh, it's a good learning curve for them. Uh, a lot of these players will be their first experience in Europe, uh, won't it? So yep. um, onwards I'd and upwards. The, va- the vast majority of them, Derek. I mean, apart from. You know, McGregor, I mean, can we really count last year as a European experience? I don't, I <laughs> I don't, don't think, think so, so no. can we? <laughs> uh, so really, apart from McGregor, I can't think of any, anyone else. I mean, you're, you're talking about... For... I know, but playing in Europe, I'm not Aye. talking about playing for in, in international football. I mean, actually playing in Europe, I don't think so. So uh, well, Lafferty and, and McGregor, won't it? Yeah, that's it. Aye, that's yeah. it. And uh, and I don't know how how many games that Lafferty actually played for us before in Europe. He, 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 he maybe had a few, but certainly McGregor. That's about it, really. Uh, so I a big learning curve. You know, a tale of what could have been, Derek. Let's be honest. Uh, but we certainly didn't disgrace ourselves, and you know, it, it gave us the support of some fantastic nights as well. So, yep. I, I don't, I, I don't think we can be too disheartened. No. 
So the next game uh, was Sunday the 16th of December at home to Hamilton where we won 1-0 but it was 1-0 going on 5-0 wasn't it? Um, or it should have been anyway. It should have been yeah. Three changes for this game. We lined up McGregor, Tavernier, Goldson, McCauley, Barisic, McCrory, Arfield, Jack, Candace, Lafferty and Grejda. On the subs bench we had Fotheringham, Worrell, Flanagan, Halliday, Middleton, Koulibaly and Andrew Dallas. No, not the referee. <laughs> <laughs> now, how funny would that have been if he'd have came off the, uh, <laughs> off the bench and scored Derek that would have been hilarious so in a game we had I think about 23 corners and I think by the 24th minute we had 12 of them so um, <sighs> just a, a, a game as I said in the post match is as big a game you can dominate without scoring more than one goal it was it was non-stop really from us and you know right from the first minute we were on them and it really should have been four or five we needed our shooting boots on and we just never had them did we definitely not and that was the problem Derek throughout the whole game that was the issue Kyle Lafferty's going through a confidence thing at the moment Derek you know he, he, he must know himself that he is the backup striker but you would like to think that he would be like well up for it, and he just he, he just he, he, he was in the game, was he? You know, the, the, any chances which I'm sure you're going to get into, he just t- totally fell short, didn't he? And we just we didn't look. We had all these chances and all these crosses and all these corners, and we made it very very easy, I think, for for Hamilton up front, and it was that was the disappointing thing. Yeah, I mean the thing with this game is we created a lot. And it wasn't like a, a war button team where we were just putting long ho- hit and hope balls in, um, especially with the corners. We were putting the balls into dangerous areas, but the players just weren't there where they should no. have been. And that was frustrating. And I know you kind of were a, a, a bit annoyed at the game um, for the fact that we were putting a lot of crosses in and we were going to nobody. But I think we were inventive. We were trying different ways of doing things. We were certainly creating a lot more than we have been doing. It's just, we, as you said, we needed somebody to shoot and it's just that the players were in the wrong positions even though great crosses were getting put in but we started off the game anyway in the first minute it was a short corner then a great cross into the back post by Tavernier Lafferty I don't know what the hell he was doing it kinda, he seemed to put his head towards it and almost back out of it it's kind of skiffed his head really should have got a proper head to it hits off the inside of the post the keeper gets his hand to it um, to stop it going over the line and he ends up um, fumbling it away to, to, for a defender to clear so instantly we thought we were going to be you know 1-0 yep. up within a minute mm-hmm. But then the, on the third minute, we did go a goal up with Kandia scoring. Uh, it was a ball down the left with Grezda to Lafferty in the box. Spins and shoots, but it was blocked by the defender. Right at the path of Kandias from 10 yards. Uh, a first-time shot into the back of the net. Brilliant. Yeah, no, great goal, as you say. And at that point of the game, Derek, we really did think the flood, floodgates were going to open, didn't we? Because they started off so well. Yep. 20th minute was a long corner from the right uh, to the back post, headed back across goal, knocked away into the path of Candias, who was about 7 yards from goal seemed to hit off the defender's leg going goal bound and then cleared off the line again so uh, another close close one there. 22nd minute Hamilton defender tried to clear the ball to stop it going from the corner, right into the path of Grezda in, who was in the box and had a shot and it was deflected uh, just by the near post and out for the corner uh, short corner in again, Tavernier floats the ball uh, in goal bound and the keeper had to tip it over the bar uh, out for the corner, so another great save for the keeper there. Yep. 40th minute, Jack had some lovely play to get the ball into the box and the player blatantly dragged him back for a free kick and the yellow card was given. Uh, the free kick was floated into the box uh, uh, by Barisic. McCauley got his head to it, forcing another great save for the keeper to deny a goal. Yeah. So, as I said, a really one-sided game. McGregor literally had absolutely nothing to do. 15 corners in the first half. As I said, the crossing had been spot on. A lot of deep crossing into the box. And it was causing the, the Hamilton defence a lot of trouble, that, that kind of crossing. Um, as I said, creation was there. But just probably a wee bit more ruthlessness in front of goal. And we would have been two or three up at that point. But again, you can't take it away from, from the Hamilton keeper because he kept them in it several times. So Yeah, he had a few good uh, uh, saves, Derek. One in particular, I think, in the second half, which I think you're about to get in, which was absolutely world class. But I just I felt it at that point, Derek. I, I know you're saying it was like we were, we were being inventive and they were going down, but it just always seemed to be the same end product. It just always seemed to be really good crosses in, into the box and just no, nobody there which is nothing to do with the creativity of the Rangers team. It's all to do with 
the finishing and getting somebody on the end of it, and that was the problem. Yeah, again, that maybe is obviously we never had Morelos in this game, and it's, I don't think we've I've said in the post match as well, and you agreed with me, but we need an out and out striker. Uh, we need an out and out poacher, sorry. A poacher, Derek, yes. Yeah, and I, I think that's what one of the things that we're lacking. We don't have that. And it's all these loose balls as well that we're not getting on the back of. Somebody who can instantly take a snapshot. And and you've got the likes of Lafferty coming back. You've got Morelis coming back. And we've got maybe two similar players in that respect there where they do like to help out. We've never had an out and out poacher since. No. Who created Billy. Uh, I was going to say Billy Todds, but. Um, well. Uh, Maybe you're right there. Well, Chris Boyd, Boyd like yeah. Derek, yes, he was the the last sort of out, out and out poacher. Uh, I kind of thought that that was the type of player that Jason Cummings could have been for us uh, when he was there last season. But obviously, something happened there. I don't know if maybe that's we were a bit hasty and not trying to re-sign Cummings because uh, he certainly had some something about him, but. Uh, I as I say, we've I've put a few tweets out and I've been I've had a few people go straight back to me telling me I'm talking absolute nonsense, which is f- fair enough. But <laughs> I think that games like that are crying out for a player uh, like Lauren Shankland at the moment that's playing for Air United. I keep saying it all, all the time and, and focusing. No, no, he would just end up like Nicky Clark, but. Lauren Shankland would score into Hamilton Ackies or Dundee or you know, nay, you know, no d- d- disrespect to these teams at the bottom of the league, but that laddie should be playing in the Premier League, and obviously in the big games we wouldn't be expecting him to play, but certainly in these games that's the type of player that you need, somebody that's going to get on on the end of it, uh, and that's and that's that's exactly what what we're missing, Derek. We're just needing. A poacher, nothing fancy whatsoever. Just somebody that will just throw their shell at a ball. You know, if there's a cross that comes in that misses everybody, he'll make sure that he's in at the back post. Ali a, a, a McCoy, do you know what I mean? And it's, it's, uh, and there is players out there that I think could do it, and he's certainly one of them. And another one who's playing well than now is our own bloody player that's playing for Livingston. Yeah, that seems to fit that mould as well. And Ryan Hardy, so. You know, there is players out there. We'll have to wait and see what happens in uh, in January. Uh, I know we don't play with two strikers. It's not the way we play. But for certain games, I think we're needing to change our style, aren't we? And, and try the two strikers up front. But as you say, Lafferty and Morelos are very similar. Not in... Obviously, Morelos is a much better player. But the way that the two of them play... Lafferty has been used to over the last few seasons to being the main striker just playing on his own as has Morelos so you know we, we do need another player in there that can play as a you know a, a strike partner to either of them when we're playing and uh, I just hope that he manages to find somebody in January that can do that because that's what we're lacking Yep, couldn't disagree with that so um, into the second half um, 49th minute, lovely move starting with Lafferty at the halfway line gets it wide to Barisic down the left Lafferty keeps running into the centre of the goal Bar- Barisic plays a great cross in and Lafferty volleys, volleys it hitting the side netting, so unlucky there 52nd minute, it was a quick break from Hamilton getting the ball into the space for the attacker to chase the ball uh, we were caught short at the back and the attacker managed to, to get a shot off making McGregor pull off a, a, a fairly comfortable save, uh, but it showed that Hamilton could still be dangerous on the break Yes, 55th minute, good move with Arfield getting the ball in plenty of space could have taken a shot himself but played it in the left of the box to Gresda who hits a shot uh, but a good save from the keeper 58th minute McCrory came off and Middleton came on he was having a, a great game again um, up until that point uh, 61st minute down the right there with, uh, with uh, Arfield getting a looped cross in going goal bound and tipped by the, the keeper uh, out to the far side and eventually cleared and in the 64th minute even Kyle Lafferty thought, there was, thought this was an right, absolutely yeah. incredible save by the keeper. A world-class save. It was a long ball played in from uh, into the box from the left, headed back into the middle by our player, and then Lafferty having a brilliant header uh, right into the, the kind of midway section of the, the goal on the left-hand side. Lafferty had actually turned, and I think he had raised his arm to touch, start celebrating, but out of nowhere, the keeper managed to pull off this incredible dive and save. He had to kind of come from behind it, I think, to actually get it, and it, he it kept was, it out. Aye. It was incredible. Yeah it was as, as you say Derek he had to go behind and how he managed to stretch and get his hand behind the ball to scoop it out was 
incredible. It was it was absolutely fantastic save. And as you say, uh, Kyle Lafferty at that moment must have knew himself that it wasn't going to be his day because that really should have been a goal. Yep. Uh, 77th minute, corner comes in. Hamilton ended up with the ball on the edge of their box. Arfield robs the defender and has a quick curling shot, but just wide of the goal. 80th minute, Candace came off and Halliday came on, who had been playing brilliant up until that point as well. 81st minute, Middleton down the left. Lovely ball from into the box. Uh, found Lafferty jumping up with a header, but over the bar. And that's where the game ended. So, as I said, a lot of chances we just couldn't find the, the back of the net and held by obviously the, the Hamilton keeper but certainly a win's a win sometimes you need to win I wouldn't say that was an ugly win but it was yeah. you know a hard fought win and you know it was a dominant performance so I'm not going to really argue with that uh, are you? Uh, ending it means the table we have played 17, won 10, drawn 4 lost 3, scored 39 uh, f- conceded 14, goal difference plus 25 and points 34 and because Hibernian amazingly beat Celtic 2-0 uh, earlier on in that day, it meant Rangers went top of the league. Yes top again Derek and here's hoping that we stay there longer than we did the last <laughs> time uh, it was uh, aye, it was it, it was just a frustrating game Derek it was, uh, we, we badly needed somebody just to put the ball out the back of the net and it didn't happen but as you say we still got the victory. We still got the three points. Uh, it was just, it was getting sort of squeaky bum time at the end again. Well, wasn't it? Because we hadn't put the game to bed. It was just, you know, you had that wee bit of doubt in the back of your head with five minutes to go. But thankfully, they managed to keep a clean sheet and take the three points, which was excellent. And going on to the next game, as you say, uh, you, you know, against Hibs, who will be firing in all cylinders, but I actually get a feeling, Derek, that that game will suit us better, because Hibs will be going out on the attack, and it lets us play to our strengths, which is hit on the break, doesn't it? Yep, so, um, at the kind of league table, as I said, we're top, uh, we're on the same points as Kelly, but uh, we've got a plus 15 goal difference, better than them, and we've uh, we've got a game in hand over them as well. Celtic, were one ahead of them, they've got a game in hand, though, we're four, we're, sorry, Aberdeen played tonight, so we're actually only one point ahead of them, they won 5-1 against Dundee, so... So obviously both the games are really galling the fact that we lost against Aberdeen and, yes. and uh, drew against um, Dundee. Uh, yep. Both teams were there for the taking um, and I can't believe Aberdeen are only one point behind us now but obviously we've got a game in hand over them. Yeah. Four points ahead of him, uh, sorry, four points ahead of Hearts, we've got a game in hand over them. Um, six points ahead of Livingston and St Johnson, and we've got a game in hand over Livy, and we're eight points ahead of Hibs just now. So obviously, big, big game to, um, tomorrow, Will. It'll be tonight uh, by the time you listen to this, I think. So we kick off there, it's away to Hibs at 19.45 kickoff. Then it's Sunday the 23rd of December at home to St Johnson, and that's a 12.15 kickoff. Wednesday the 26th of December, again, uh, Hibs uh, were at home this time that's our 3 o'clock kick off and then obviously the big one to round out the year Saturday the 29th of December at home to Celtic uh, which is a 12.30 kick off so I think uh, we'll be back probably after the Boxing Day fixture won't we or we'll see we'll, we'll. Well, certainly aim, aim to be Derek. We'll wait and see. Um, yeah. uh, as you say, we've got you know four massive games coming up, Derek. This is going to be a huge month. I think this is going to be make make or break. I just, uh, as I say, we need to just take w- one game at a time. Take care of Hibs tomorrow night, and then you know we'll take we'll, we'll take it for there. But t- tomorrow is going to be a massive game for us, uh, but like I said I think Hibs will be well up for it they'll, they'll be going for it and that could play to our advantage because that is the way that we like to play uh, I don't know uh, I was I watched uh, Stephen Gerrard's press conference so I've, I've got a feeling that uh, obviously we'll have Fredo Morelos back, I think we'll possibly go with Gresda, Morelos and Candace as our sort of front three, would you agree with that? I think so yeah We'll just have to wait and see who he puts in mid- midfield or how, how many changes he makes. No, no doubt there'll be changes to the team, won't, won't there? Because uh, he doesn't really go for playing the same t- team again, which is you know sometimes their downfall. But the thing is, I no, would I would keep the same team as Hamilton because I think we need to start getting this consistency with the team and stop chopping and changing I, all the time. I have a wee uh, worry at the moment, Derek, just because he's played a lot of games for us. 
and he is still so young in Glenn Middleton. I maybe think that Middleton needs to, you know, have a wee stint on the bench. I think he's played a hell of a lot of games for us, and he is still v- very young. And at the same time, Derek, we've, you know, Stephen Gerrard's paid a lot of money for Gresta. Mm-hmm. He, you know, he's his player. He's the player. You know, he's he's a left winger. He's the player that he saw as linking up with. Uh, Barisic on the left hand side so this is still a partnership that we've still to really see uh, as you know Gresda and, and Barisic there so uh, that, that's what I want to see on the left hand side it's, it's good to have the option of, of, of Middleton being in but I do think that we've been relying on him a lot and he is still a young laddie but we'll just have to wait and see yeah, just that we're talking about um, earlier. We're talking about strikers and all that, and who might come in now. Bill Young's tweeted about twenty-five minutes ago saying that Jerry Collins is uh, suggesting on Talking Football that Celtic signed Scott Allen to get at Rangers. So basically, to stop Rangers getting them, which is, is not a suggestion that really bloody did happen. That's what Celtic do; they've done it throughout their history. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, Celtic will also attempt to get Solanke uh, to do it again. So. I don't know if that would happen with it. I, I, I don't know, Derek. See, to be honest with you, I really don't know much about Dominic Solanke apart, you know, apart from the fact he's a England under twenty one striker and he's he, he's highly rated. I really don't know much more about the guy. Uh, I don't know what type of striker that he is. If he's one, you know, a bit like Morelos that plays as the lone striker or he plays as a front two. At this m- moment in time, I would prefer us to get something totally different to what we've got already. I would like to see us just get a no-nonsense, stick the ball in the back of the net striker rather than somebody who sort of plays up front and you know likes to hold up the ball or, or likes to run at players. I would just like to see us get, get, get a poacher. I yeah. think that's exactly what, what we're needing. I don't think we're needing a player who's similar to Morelos or Lafferty. I think we're needing something totally different and um, we'll just have to wait and see. Maybe Solanke is that type of player, Derek. I don't know, but I've... Uh, that's certainly you know the players I think that he should be looking at as well as a creative midfielder which we're crying out for as well. Yeah, we we'll just need to see, wait and see in, in yeah. the, the January transfer window. Exactly. Um, so we're now going to go into the classic match. And there it is. The final whistle's gone. Rangers have won the European Cup Winners' Cup. Right, so we're going from playing the green half of Edinburgh tomorrow night uh, to, Dave, you've got uh, a great victory against the maroon half of Edinburgh, haven't you? Yes, I have, Derek. I'm going to go back quite some time now. I'm going to go back 31 years ago, believe it or not. I was only 12 years old, Derek, and this was really the season that I really got into football in, in any way and supporting Rangers and cheering them on and uh, it was a fantastic game I'm really pleased that I found it actually because it actually let me see Graham Souness playing in midfield for Rangers and actually scoring as well even although it was a you know a, a deflected goal but still just to see him no, the game I'm taking us to is a fantastic game a way back on the 7th of February 1987 where Graham Souness's Rangers took on Alec McDonald's Hearts in a league game. Uh, the Rangers team that day was Chris Woods, Graham Roberts, uh, Grangemouth's own Stuart Monroe, Graham Souness himself, Dave McPherson and Terry Butcher, Jimmy Nicholl, Robert Fleck, Ali McCoy, Ian Durant and Davy Cooper. Now, have some absolute legends in there, Derek. It really was. The Hearts team as well. Now, I'm not expecting you to know any of these players, Derek, apart from maybe two out of there, but certainly players that I remember uh, in goals. Henry Smith, Walt, Walter Kidd, Jimmy Sanderson, Neil Berry, uh, John Cahoon, uh, Sandy Clark. Kenny Black and a very young John Robertson. So uh, this was a fantastic game to watch, Derek. It was great for the fact that we were just sort of introducing the more sort of stern refereeing decisions, but there were still loads of wild tackles going in there, and you could tell that the referee that they had was sort of old school, uh, trying to implement some of the new rules to, to, to football, but there was still a lot of incredible tackles going on, and you knew if Graham Souness was playing in the centre of the midfield, but I'm, I'm going to go on to Souness after the game, uh, but it was just great to watch, but straight away in the second minute, 
Rangers had won a corner and the corner came in and Davy Cooper uh, with a header ended up just go, going wide. Davy Cooper not renowned for his heading abilities as we'll get on to later on in the game as well. Uh, very early on, Graham Sunis booked for a, sort of a hard, reckless challenge in the centre of midfield, but I think that was basically him just telling everybody that he was there. And then a great chance for Ro- Robert Fleck. The ball uh, from a throw-in, it was headed on by Jimmy Nicholl, uh, just o- over the bar. Uh, really, really unlucky there. Graham Sunis, though, kept going back to wee flashes of him in midfield, directing the play just t- taking the ball and taking as much time as he wanted, even when there was tackles flying, he was just so strong that you know he could stand off just, just about anything. Then on the 25th minute, a long ball up to Ali McCoist, who was running and it bounced just in front of him and he had a fantastic sort of half volley. Tremendous save by Henry Smith to put it out for a corner. But then we didn't have to wait too much longer because on the 31st minute, the Rangers took the lead. Good play from Munro. Promising for Rangers, it's Fleck. A magnificent goal from Robert Fleck. Rangers go ahead. Half an hour on the clock. But the goal appears to have been chopped off. No, it's not. The referee going back for a moment. A pause among the fans, but the goal stands. And it undoubtedly was done initially to the inventive play of Stuart Munro. Coming up to join in with the attack with Sunnis and Cooper. Munro forcing his way forward, managed to play the ball square. Now how about this for presence of mind and control for all the flick and the accurate driven shot beyond Henry Smith into the corner. It was actually a throw in. Davy Cooper had the ball and he spots Stuart Munro making a run right up the left wing. Cooper throws it right into the, the feet of Stuart Monroe who runs it into the box cuts the ball back to Robert Fleck who sidesteps his man on the penalty area and hits the ball low past Henry Smith and into the net to make it 1-0 to Rangers fantastic move there then in the 35th minute with the climbing being done High cross eh, from the right hand side. Terry Butcher deemed to put in a sort of bad tackle on eh, Sandy Clark, and the referee gave a penalty. Really quite un- unlucky with that one. Oh, he's the only one he's taken this season. Robertson, no mistake this time. John Robertson stepped up and scored for Hearts to make it 1-1 but only two minutes later Rangers were back in front and it was a great reply from Rangers Sunis and Cooper waiting Deflected and the goal for Graham Sunis Davy Cooper picks up the ball and has a wee run to the edge of the box, doing what we all know, know that he could, and he was sort of scythed down right at the edge of the box for a free kick to Rangers. And both Sunis and Cooper were standing over the ball. We were all expecting Davy Cooper to step up and hit it with his left foot, but it wasn't. It was Graham Sunis, right footed shot, which hit the wall and deflected past Henry Smith into the goal to make it 2-1 to Rangers. A wee bit fortunate, but really no caring. Rangers were by far the better team at that point, Derek, so we were really going for it. That's how the game stayed uh, till half-time with Rangers with that one-goal advantage, 2-1. So it gets into the second half. John Robertson, actually, Hearts were quite unlucky here, and this is where I was talking about the sort of rules that were coming into football, because John Robertson raced through and it was scythed down by uh, Dave McPherson. Now, if that had have been nowadays, it would have been a definite straight red card. Last man going through, but the referee 
was lenient towards us uh, and Dave McPherson that day, maybe because of the sort of soft penalty in the first half, I don't know, but Dave McPherson escaped with a yellow card. Very, very fortunate there. And then on the 58th minute, Jimmy Nicholl races down the wing and puts a cross in. The cross is turned out from the uh, for a corner and from that corner, Rangers extended the lead. There's the Cooper. Smith's in trouble. Fleck. Yes. 3-1 to Rangers. Opportunism at its very best to Robert Fleck. 14th minute of the second half. And Robert Fleck gets his second in the area. Smith couldn't get to the ball. It was helped out. There was Fleck with the overhead effort. And straight into the roof of the net. The corner was taken from Davy Cooper. It was headed away by the Hearts defender, but only as far as Robert Fleck, who had an absolutely sensational overhead kick right over the keeper, right over the defender that was on uh, Garden, the goal line, right over him into the net. Sensational goal for Robert Fleck. Fantastic. And that put Rangers 3-1 up at that point in the game. Hearts were then unlucky not long after that when they had a shot uh, there was a sort of cross put in. It wasn't uh, dealt with by the Rangers defence and the Hearts player actually hit the shot and it came crashing off the bar. But then on the 64th minute, Davy Cooper is absolute best on the left-hand side. Leaves his man for dead. I think it was Walter Kidd. He absolutely took the utter piss, run to the edge of the box, danced past another two players and then in to the left-hand side, sorry, which would be the goalkeeper's right. He sidestepped Henry Smith and put a fantastic cross in, but so unlucky it was cleared uh, and put out. Absolutely sensational stuff by David Cooper. Absolutely brilliant. But then two minutes later, we basically sealed the game after that. There's Durant. That's towards McCoy. And it's come off Kenny Black. Well, it certainly is not Hearts afternoon. Midway through the second half, the fourth goal for Rangers. It was a splendid move through the middle as McCoy went on to that great pass. Smith did well with the save and it came back off Kenny Black and over the line agonisingly an own goal and the Rangers ball. Ian Durant who picked up the ball in midfield and basically just ran right up the centre of the park. He sees Ali McCoist making a run and he dinks the ball through to Ali McCoist. McCoist and Henry Smith both go for the ball at the same time. McCoy tries to dink the ball over Henry Smith. Henry Smith pulls off a good save, but he only palms it down on the defender. It hits the defender and rolls into the net to make it. 4-1 to Rangers, really un unlucky there by Henry Smith, but a great move by Rangers, but uh, that was that, so un unlucky there for Hearts, but we will certainly take it, so 4-1 to Rangers at that then after that there was a lot of, sort of argy-bargy in the box and in the Rangers box, there was a lot of elbows and people getting hauled back and stuff like that, but back then these things were more tolerated than they are now but then we've went for seeing the best of Davy Cooper to seeing the worst of Davy Cooper because he uh, had an absolute shocker of a miss not long after that. It was Ali McCoy who actually challenged the Hearts defender on the wing, the right wing, and wins the ball and puts over the most inch perfect cross. Henry Smith completely misses it, and all Davy Cooper's got to do is nod it into an empty net, and he completely completely misses it and it hits off he flicks it with his head and misses it and actually hits his shoulder and trundles out for a goal kick to Hearts quite incredible that he missed it he must have been absolutely gutted but he did redeem himself 10 about 5 minutes later sorry on the 76th minute towards Fleck he's up with Kidd Cooper running it down Sanderson touching it away he had a chance now for McCoy taken and that was the goal McCoy wanted so badly played through into the path of Ali McCoy he found his bearings very quickly and then that left foot shot rifled past Henry Smith he picked 
picks up the ball and threads through an inch perfect pass to Ali McCoy, who stays on side, who shoots low and hard underneath the goalkeeper to make it. 5-1 to Rangers fantastic goal by Ali McCoy doing what he does best and then to round the game off Hearts were given another a dubious penalty for a very soft hand ball in the box McPherson brought down by Robertson the referee allows play to continue here's John Robertson forces his way into the box a hand was used by Roberts yes a penalty kick for Hearts no question about it Roberts used the hand John Robertson fired in to make it 5-2 and that's how the game finished Derek uh, anybody that gets a chance to go and watch it I thoroughly enjoyed watching it just to see Graham Souness and I'm watching him on the TV right now he's on Sky Sports right now as I'm, uh, as I'm speaking to you Graham Souness he was just he was just as cool as a cucumber, Derek, and he had this. I don't know if you if if, if you can remember ever watching Souness play, Derek. I, I didn't really get the chance to watch him play when he played for Liverpool. I can vaguely remember him playing for Scotland, but when he uh, when he was playing for Rangers, he had this real arrogance about him and I don't mean arrogance like fucking Scott Brown where somebody will put in a hard tackle on Scott Brown and he'll jump up and do his fucking swagger like uh, Conor McGregor as if to say I'm the hard man and everybody's going to try and hurt me and it doesn't matter Graham Souness would go through you as soon as he looked at you Derek and if the referee came up to him he speak to him he would go fucking mental at the referee just for, for even suggesting that it should have been a yellow card or something like that. I don't know if you, if you ever got, got to see him or no Derek but he, you knew, knew if you were playing in midfield against Graham Souness that you were going to take a badge in at some point you just knew that you were going to get thumped and he was so blasé about it and it was just it was great to see and I really don't think we've had anybody in midfield like that ever since and he just seemed to have, you know have make time for himself in the ball even if he had a bad touch he would still make time for his people would try to win the ball off him and there would be absolutely no chance and he was just a magnificent bastard to watch in midfield, he, re- he really was Derek, it was it's great to watch him and also getting to see D- Davy Cooper play as well was just brilliant as well, the guy was just so direct, he had every trick under the book and again, so solid D- Davy Cooper, there wasn't that many folk could challenge D- Davy Cooper and sort of wipe him out like a lot of other wingers that, that you see especially in, in those days just great to watch and if you get the chance to go back and watch it please do because it brought back some absolutely great memories for me and I thoroughly enjoyed doing it I mean you were asking me if I remembered ever watching Graham Souness now I was two year old so I was still eating paste at that point Dave, so <laughs> <laughs> Derek, you're 32 and you're still eating paste <laughs> So, um, on that note, we'll uh, move on quickly <laughs> <laughs> Yes, another fantastic game, it was great to go back and watch that um, You know, uh, strange looking at how the stadium, what the stadium were at that yeah. point as well You know, there was nothing to them, there were shells basically, all terraces and um, great atmosphere as well obviously I know that. It was quite funny to see all the, the Hearts fans walking out after the fourth goal I know. Went in. it was I also sitting back Derek as well and seeing uh, John Robertson play for Hearts now John Robertson obviously went and had a very long and successful career uh, with Hearts but another player Derek who I think if he'd have got a move to us or to another club could have been an absolutely sensational striker he was the closest striker in that era I think to Ali McCoist very similar and just a pity he didn't win that much in his career with Hearts but an absolute legend and a, a fantastic striker John Robertson, they got a few caps for Scotland as well but uh, I, I used to always think that, I, I used to think that especially wh- wh- when he was in his prime, I wonder what he'd have been like if we'd have signed him as well, maybe McCoyst wouldn't have been as successful because if as soon as I'd have had Robertson he definitely would have dropped McCoyst because you know what he was like, eh? but <laughs> uh, he, was, he was a fantastic striker as well so no, no, it was great, great to watch and I urge anybody to go back and, and, and have a wee watch because it was great to see Yes, so we'll be back with another classic match next time. So we'll go into the news. (laughs) 
So not a lot of news to cover this time, and I can't believe the two two bits of news here I'm going to talk about that we never covered in the uh, in the actual game is that the first one, Umar Sadiq has had his loan terminated. <laughs> 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 Just your reaction there was brilliant. <laughs> Says it all, doesn't it? It really does, Derek. We, I think when he came in at first, we had high hopes, and those high hopes were very, very quickly dashed, weren't they? <laughs> Do you know what? I don't, <laughs> think, I don't think it's fair of any of our, one of our fans to actually judge him, because we haven't really seen him enough to, to do so. I mean, it was a season-long loan. <laughs> I thought that he came in for the semi-final. He'd done a fairly good job. He, he, he never set the, the header alight, but he never you know, disgraced himself either, and I felt he did fairly well, especially considering that was his first start, wasn't it? So, well. um, as I said, I don't think it's fair to judge him as a football player. Uh, obviously, he came with, with high expectations coming from Roma, but um, must be an attitude thing then, shouldn't it? I think he enjoyed his cell, Derek. I'm sure he did, eh? <laughs> he, was, he was always smiling and happy any time there was any pictures taken of him and stuff like that. But no, we wish the guy all the best. It didn't work out. Uh, fair to say, I don't. I honestly don't think he'll be missed, uh, and really just have to leave it there. I think he's actually got himself a loan straight away to another club. I think I seem to read that he's actually away to Foggia, who are in the. As well as what you were going to say there. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh, who I think are in the second division in Italy. So. We'll wait and see how, how how he gets on there, but maybe just no suited to Scottish football, shall we say? Well, we'll um, I think we'll just leave leave it there. Eh? This season's Dalcio. Aye, something like that. Although it had more appearances than Dalcio, da- 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 <laughs> let's be honest. Yep, and another loan player to uh, end it early, and it was on his terms this time because he's, I think, personal issues is Ovi Ajaria. Um, yeah. Really not able to cut, uh, not able to adjust to life in Glasgow, it appears. Um, he looked out of sorts for a number of weeks. I can't really see him breaking into the Liverpool team. Um, wish him well, obviously, but clearly couldn't hack it at, at a big club like this. Well, Derek, a guy who I think we all thought could. You know, he certainly had the potential. We saw wee flashes here and there. He didn't disgrace himself either, as you say. He had quite a few good performances for us. I've heard a lot of people talking about him, and you were actually speaking about Bill Young back then. They, uh, he had quite a lot to say about him on his show that I was listening to last week. A lot of good, good points, and I suppose this guy, this is the most amount of sort of top team football that this guy's ever played. Derek, he's been playing. Academy football with Liverpool, he's been playing in their, uh, you, you know, their youth leagues and their reserve leagues, and then he went away to Sunderland and, play, uh, and played a few games at Sunderland. When Sunderland were getting relegated, I'd like to add as well. So, this is the first time that he's really been playing sort of high tempo football, playing for a team, challenging for the top of the league. So, the pressure's on the guy, but you know, obviously, if if he can't handle it, we certainly that's not the type of player that we want at the club. And again, we just have to hope for him that he, you, you know he manages to find you know he's you know something uh, that, you know or a team that he can play well for. But I we just slightly dis- disappointed there, Derek. That the, 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 there was a glimmer that he could have been a good player for us, but not to be. Mm. Uh, and another player who is potentially coming back is Carlos Pena uh, he's been spotted back in Glasgow he's still yep. under contract for another two years yep. um, you know our opinion we, we think give him a go um, certainly might solve a part of that creative thing especially you can score goals as well Yes, there's a player there um, He it's really kind of up to the management team he'll either want to see his contract out or it'll be a kind of payoff situation so um Hope hopefully knuckles down in training if he gets the it gets a chance and you know the, the the manager likes what he sees and gives him a wee go. If it doesn't work out this time, then certainly by all means pay him off. But you know I think it's he's on our books. We paid a lot yeah, for him. We're not exactly. going to get any money back. May as well try him. Well, he's the the, the balls in his court, Derek. It now comes down to him what he uh, wants to do and you know I think with that I I can't really see any Rangers fan out there who would honestly turn around and say oh this boy's utter shite a complete waste because we all know he can score goals Derek and that's what what we're needing to know so 
Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. It depends what his attitude's like, isn't it? I've been, I, but I've not seen anything at all of him at training or anything like that with the first team. So I don't even know if he's back in training with the first team or not. No, I've no idea, so that's be another wait and see this one. Um, another player to sign is youth team player Dapo Mabudi, I think yep. that's how you say it, his name. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's signed an extension till 2021. He's a 17-year-old, highly rated apparently, yep. and his deal was set to expire at the end of the season, so good that we've signed him up, especially if he's highly yes. rated, and he's also trained uh, recently for the first, with the first that's team. That's right, so. yes, right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Another couple of players here, we've taken Chicago Fire player Matt Polster uh, on trial, as well as highly rated college football player Andrew Gutman um, on trial as well, so whether there's with a view to actually properly sign them or it's obviously if I think they're in their off season so uh, just to give them a wee bit of run out and see what it's all about I don't know but for what, for what I read the first guy poster is a right back and apparently he's supposed to be a very very good player now it's the one position I don't think that we're that we're really st- struggling our way because we've got Tav and we've got Flanagan in, in there as well and I know a lot of folk d- d- didn't like Flanagan but that was the position that I thought that Flanagan was was a right back so a bit of a strange one there but at the same time if this guy comes in and looks absolutely fantastic then you know we would have to sign him the other guy apparently is a midfielder Derek and this is the one this is the guy who I think that they've got high hopes for this guy is really sort of highly rated I don't I read up a wee bit about him this, this afternoon and certainly going by you know a, a lot of the American sort of football fans out there, they all rate this guy really highly. So, again, it's uh, a tie up with you know, we've always d- done well with American players, haven't we, Derek? It's yeah. always been you know, a wee sort of link in, in the team that we have. So, I will wait and see. I was just a pity that one of them was now a striker, that's what, I was, <laughs> that's what I was really hoping for. But there you go. Yep. Uh, at the Hamilton game there, Rangers carried out a smoking pilot. Uh, basically, they allowed two gates to be opened at half time within the Sandy Jardin stand and allowed fans uh, with uh, ample stewarding to go and have a smoke uh, at half time. Kind of a good idea, obviously, because you, you know what the toilets are like at Ibrox oh. and really any football ground. Uh, um, but again, it's one of these sad indictments of people with, uh, they can't go 90 minutes odd with, without having a smoke. I know. So. I know. You, you know my feelings on it Derek especially the whole t- toilet situation is absolutely ridiculous especially if you've got kids and you, you know your kids are, 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 are needing to go to the toilet and you can't bloody see because the smoke's that bad you didn't want your child inhaling all that and it was it, that was really a big bugbear of mine and exactly like what you said how how can somebody no wait you know, an hour and a half to hear a cigarette is beyond me. It's uh, quite incredible. But no, I certainly welcome that, Derek. If it's going to get the folk out, out of the toilets here and I smoke and stand out there, then I think that's a great idea. So here's hoping it was a success. Yep. And uh, for tomorrow night's game, the last piece of Rangers news I've got here, that for tomorrow night's game, or tonight's game as it might be, um, we've only been given 200, uh, sorry, 2,000 tickets uh, for yep. the Hibs game after Hibs have cited high demand for tickets. Now, they said that about the Celtic game at the weekend as well, and it's the only bit of praise I'll ever give this person, but the Celtic SLO tweeted uh, pictures of half-empty stands within yep. the, the, the away end um, at uh, Easter Road at the weekend. Basically, I think he had the caption saying, without uh, fans football is nothing or something mm-hmm. similar so the only thing I'll agree with them on Hibs I mean uh, it's been talked about on online tonight is Rangers and Celtic well, certainly Rangers cut Celtic's allocation because we could sell it uh, to season ticket holders and we're doing it for our own fans Celtic have in turn done the same which uh, obviously for old firm, old firm games has worked Hibs have done it to act like a big club Really, and it, it just looks pathetic when they can't sell out their, their ground like this. And they've done it for no other reason than than just to, to act like the big Billy Big Boss and think that they're they're great. They're going to lose out in money for it. Hell, mend them. Don't care about them. We'll, we'll, we'll wait and see, Derek. It is us that, that they're playing. The so I mean, you know, if there's any team that their supporters will want to come out and you know watch their team play, it'll be us. So. No. It'll be interesting to see if they do have a full state stadium or not. Uh, Gerard did did intimate that. It did say that as well. Yes. It's good to see that the mm-hmm. fans want to come and see Rangers. So exactly. Yep. He's got the wee digs in already. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes, obviously we've been following a couple of the results for Cruz Azul, and unfortunately they never won the first title in 21 years. Uh, apparently they drew the first leg. I, d- I don't understand how it works. That it was a playoff system. Uh, it's and a bit of a strange yeah, way that they have things there. Yeah. They drew the first leg 0-0, and then they got beat 2-0 at home in the second leg, so... Unfortunately, they never won the league, but they did win the cup, which is a major thing as well. I, I, I think uh, we've talked about it before. There is something there with Kashinia. Um, I think he was a decent enough manager. I think he just, you know, lost the dressing room. There was a few characters in our dressing room at the time who, again, thought they were Billy Big Bollocks. Uh, overrun him. Over had the the rule of the dressing room, and I think the media gave him a hard time as well. And it definitely wasn't, yeah. wasn't to be so. Um, but I'm sure you know he'll be back for next year. Yeah, no, it's, uh, as, as you say, Derek, there's definitely something there, but uh, Scottish football, you know, maybe just wasn't it for him. You know, there was some strange sight signings that he did make. I think if he had of, uh, you know, addressed the defence situation as his main priority, he would have done a hell of a lot better. I think that was the big problem. It was the first thing that Stephen Gerrard did when he came in was uh, address that problem, but he didn't. Uh, you know, he signed, he signed uh, Br- Bruno Alves, and he also signed uh, what's his name, Fabio Cardoso. But neither of the two of them, they were kind of big di- di- disappointments for us, weren't they? And it, it didn't work out. And you know, look, look at the mess that happened after that, and that was the issue. So I think that was the first thing that St- Stephen Gerrard knew he had to do was go out and try and get the defence sorted. But. Uh, I would just have to, to wait and see. I'm sure that he will be successful out there. And who knows? He might try and sign Kit Car- Carlos Pena if he does the settled <laughs> in here. So, police. <laughs> you, you, here we go with a big sigh of <laughs> When you go. Police are searching for a man who has been described as having a small penis and notably low hanging <laughs> testicles after he flashed a student. <laughs> Now, obviously, we don't condone any kind of no. sexual deviancy like that at all. So, but just uh, you know, th- this is where the story going. So, the offender struck around one fifteen p.m. on Sunday, the eighteenth of November, when he flashed a twenty-year-old student in York as she walked alone uh, down a woodland cycle path in the direction of Hull Road. The victim was heading home after she was confronted by the man who is said to have a bare chest and his trousers round his ankles. The flasher then performed a sex act in front of the woman before she managed to get away and call the police. He remained in the area for about five minutes before leaving. The suspect is described as white, with a very pale complexion aged between 35 and 45 years old, around 5 foot 10 inches tall, with a fat build. He has very little chest or pubic hair, with no obvious tattoos or scars, and what is described as a small penis with testicles that hang noticeably below. (laughs) Okay, that's a a, a pretty... uh... That's, that's a pretty good description. She obviously got a very good look. That's all I can say. Aye, in the dark. Yeah, that was one. It was PM, so it was mid, round about midday. Aye, all right, okay. Aye. Midday. Oh my god. There's some fucking weird folk going on about, isn't there? Absolutely. Totally. Woman arrested for sitting on boyfriend's face after he refused to give up oral sex. <laughs> A woman in Missouri has been charged with sexual abuse and domestic assault after she allegedly beat up her boyfriend before sitting on his face after he refused to perform oral sex. So she, she beat him up and then sat on his face. Yeah, again, not condoning domestic abuse here, but come on. <laughs> okay. She apparently struck him about 25 times with an open and closed fist and then claimed she had and then it was claimed that she hit him with a belt, mobile phone and a brass plate. <laughs> At one point it was reported that she allegedly chased her boyfriend around the house naked, pushed him to the ground and sat on his face. While there, her boyfriend claims she demanded, "Eat my pussy," unable to breathe as he, he was scared to death. <laughs> Again, I should do. <laughs> Woman's loud fart lands her in prison after she pulls a knife on fellow, fellow customer. 
A woman who farted noisily in a shop has been jailed after threatening to gut a man uh, who complained about it. 37-year-old Shanetta Avet Wilson audibly broke wind while queuing in the checkout at a Dollar, uh, Dollar General corner shop in, in Florida. The fart and the resulting incident took place on in November. A fellow customer by the name of John Walker reportedly did not take kindly to her passing gas so loudly in public and complained about it. Wilson then proceeded to pull out a knife and threatened to gut him. It's a bit touchy, eh? Yeah, I'm definitely no bloody <laughs> farting in public again, especially in Florida. Oh, I'll hate you watch when I'm there next year. <laughs> definitely. So, on that note, that wraps up the podcast for this week. As ever, uh, if you want to check us out, uh, or if you ho- head over to our website, which is iReadyPodcast.wordpress.com, you can find links to all our different stuff that we've got, like Facebook, our Twitter page, our Instagram page, our YouTube page. Uh, we've got iTunes as well. We're on Spotify. We're on Podbean. Check us out and uh, keep listening. Yes, definitely. And uh, fingers crossed for a performance and a victory tomorrow night. Absolutely. So, as I said, Dave and I will be back hopefully at some point, but we might just do a big mega pod uh, in the new year, but we'll wait and see what happens anyway. So, hopefully, be back shortly. But I'll be back anyway tomorrow night with a post match and reaction pod for the Hibs game. Yes. Yes. So, thanks for listening and goodbye. Take care, folks. Goodbye. And the stadium erupts in red, white, and blue. You've never seen anything.